Not Massacre by Puppet Combo is a surreal, horrifying experience of an individual who endured a tragedy, leading to the current events. As Mrs. McDonnell, the protagonist, enters a seemingly abandoned boarding school after receiving a strange letter, inviting her there to collect her daughter, she experiences paranormal events with a petrifying unimaginable blind nun, who despite having her eyes gouged out, chases down Mrs. McDonnell with a large knife, knowing exactly where she is. This brings the question to whether what Mrs. McDonald experiences are real paranormal occurrences or mere figments of delusion. Hi folks, I'm R, your narrator. You can follow me on Twitter where you can send me cool game suggestions with deep stories such as this one. This video will contain spoilers. With that in mind, let's begin. Mrs. McDonald receives a letter urging her to go to Janie's school, her daughter's Christian boarding school and collect her, as she has fallen ill. Mrs. McDonald drives as close as she can to the school before her way is blocked. She leaves her car and proceeds to walk the rest of the way in a stormy dark night. After walking for a while in a dangerous cliffside, she finally reaches the overshadowing school with tall walls. As she enters, a strange feeling of terror runs down through her skin, as she observes the abandoned boarding school with many traps within it, such as a deep pit filled with barbed wires. Mrs. McDonald picks up a lighter to make it easier for her to navigate through the dark interior of the school and stumbles upon a diary from her daughter, Janie. Dear Diary, Mommy dropped me off at my new school. I'm going to miss my old friends. I brought Bongo with me though. We have a teacher named Sister Euphemia. She has an assistant named Sister Odilia. They're teaching us all about the saints and what wonderful lives they lived. Today, we learned about Saint Lucy. Her eyes were put on a plate and she became a martyr. That's a weird word. Sister Euphemia said that her love for God saved her from the evil romance that tried to hurt her. Sister Rose said that Mother Apollonia is gonna take care of us. Meanwhile, Mrs. McDonald encounters a psychopathic nun with her eyes gouged out and black tears running down her face, chasing after her with a knife, being driven with murderous intents. Mrs. McDonald soon comes across another diary, unveiling more details. Dear diary, Mother Apollonia hates me. She pulled me out of class today, but I didn't do anything. I got the ruler five times. I hate it here. I can't make friends. Nobody else wants to talk to me. I really don't believe in God. If God was real, there wouldn't be so many bad people in the world. I miss mommy and my old friends. I want to go home to a normal school. This unveils the horrible treatment Janie was receiving from the cruel nuns. She also found it difficult to make any friends. Soon later, Mrs. McDonald finds a metallic bed in a room next to the restrooms, which seems to have been used for some sort of experiments, if not rituals and other horrible acts. Another diary from Janie unveils yet more information about the atrocities she had to face while in the school. Dear diary, I need to pee really bad in class, but Mother Apollonia wouldn't listen. I couldn't hold it, so I tried to pee a little at my desk, but she found out and everybody laughed at me. I had to clean it up and walk around in my underwear the rest of the day. The other kids call me pee pants now. I'm never going to have friends. I'm trying to pray more, but I feel so alone. I don't know what to write. So that's the end for now. Mrs. McDonnell, horrified to this discovery and the harsh treatment her daughter had to endure, she becomes even more determined to find her and embrace her, telling her that it's all going to be all right. After evading the psychopathic nun who tries to viciously stab Mrs. McDonnell, she finds a scrap piece of paper which the daughter has written more information on. Sorry, I didn't write in forever. 
what her Apollonia found my diary and locked me in punishment. I didn't think I would ever get out. I found a new paper to write on. I want to go home. She doesn't treat the other kids this way. This unveils that mother Apollonia is specifically horrible to the daughter for some reason. As of yet, it's not clear and only to speculate. The daughter might be an outsider or fresh mind for mother Apollonia to torment and mold the way she sees fit in her own twisted manner. In a strange hidden room, Mrs. MacDonald is horrified to the sight of a writing on a wall where they offer flesh to Christ. It's not as of yet clear if they offer actual flesh or just mannequin parts instead for their own sick and psychopathic cultist rituals as Mrs. MacDonald witnesses some mannequin hands impaled on top of spikes nearby. She soon comes across another diary. I was locked in punishment again. I screamed to let me go to the bathroom. I couldn't hold it in so I pooped on the floor. Mother Apollonia found out and I had to pick it up and rub it all over me. She showed the other kids and everybody laughed. I can't stop crying. I want to climb out of the window. It's too high. I can't hear her coming. She's looking for me. She's saying, where are you, Janie? According to this diary, alongside the previous ones, Mother Apollonia is extremely sadistic and takes great joy in embarrassing children and breaking them into submission. Mrs. MacDonald, at this point, presumes that the psychopathic killer nun might be Mother Apollonia, as she matches her cruelty and lack of empathy. After placing two candles at an altar, a headless corpse crucified in place of Jesus breaks out of the stained glass, creating a surreal scenery, still having a fresh body, which is very unlikely. Through watching some videotapes, Mrs. MacDonald discovers that her daughter took her clown doll with her called Bongo. Bongo was the only friend she had while in the school, which harshly bullied her, both from the nuns and the students. The tapes show how Janie ended up killing herself just like her doll Bongo, who couldn't take the harassment and punishments anymore. Two other notes seemingly by Mrs. MacDonald, which are reflection of her own thoughts embodied in the notes, reveal the truth behind the story. Mothers cuddle and protect their children. I'm going to save this child, no matter what I have to be. This pain will save my daughter. A good mother knows that. I can give her this discipline, but not as her mother. Her mother will try to protect her from the pain she feels. If I can't save her as her mother, then her mother will have to leave. The sister will have to guide her. This home will be her school. This woman will be her teacher. She'll understand that it's because her mother loves her. It's because God loves her. There is no way to control this child. There's only so much I can be expected to do for her. Mother Apollonia would know what to do. She knew that children need discipline and structure. You can't expect that to come on its own. God works through the actions of the faithful, after all. If I can't fix her sinful ways as a mother, then surely a sister can. Fear is as clear a path of righteousness as anything. In a shocking turn of events, it's revealed that Mrs. MacDonald was in fact the perpetrator who sent Janie into this correctional religious camp in the first place on purpose. She knew all about the pain she endured and the misery she would have to face. Janie, as mentioned before, was not a believer in God. This made Mrs. MacDonald afraid of God and as a result, she thought the best way to make a believer out of Janie was to only make her experience fear and a specific type of discipline, which involved mental and physical abuse. Mrs. MacDonald mentions that she couldn't bring herself to hurt her own daughter in the name of discipline to save her soul, as she is a mother and she couldn't bear to see her suffer. 
That is why she enrolled her in a strict and specific type of correctional camp that specializes in these matters. That is why Jenny was specifically targeted by the evil mastermind nun, Mother Apollonia, who was efficient in torturing and breaking children to submission. This only backfires as Janie ends her own life, not being able to endure the humiliation and the sheer intensity of the abuse. This presumably results in the camp to shut down due to the media and public pressure. Not many years later, Mrs. MacDonald, overwhelmed by severe self-guilt, knowing full well she was the culprit behind her daughter's death, which was self-inflicted, and as in religious beliefs, one who commits such acts faces eternal punishment in hellfire. She becomes only more overwhelmed by these thoughts, as in her own twisted psychopathic way, she loved her daughter and wanted to save her soul from hell. Knowing that she lost her daughter after being so badly scarred and broken, and that she possibly will end up in hell, Mrs. MacDonald loses the concept of reality and fiction, and goes insane. She receives an imaginary letter from the camp that her daughter is sick, which the sickness is the representation of the mental and physical abuse she went through. Mrs. MacDonald travels to the long-abandoned, dark correctional camp with the delusional intention to save the daughter she so mercilessly gave away to suffer. In there, she witnesses surreal events such as a pit filled with barbed wires and tools of torture and aspects of cultism, which are all what she imagines the boarding school must have been like, with her mind over-exaggerating it. She further reads notes and diaries left by her daughter, which are possibly representation of what she learned to have happened to her daughter, with the notes and diaries being unlikely to still be in the long-abandoned, rummaged and ransacked boarding school. Mrs. MacDonald also becomes hunted by an imaginary representation of Saint Lucy, the martyr who Janie talked about, a saint that lost her eyes by the cruel and torturous Romans. She is also embodied by the vengeful soul of Janie, as when Mrs. MacDonald gets too close to the nun, child whispers can be heard. <laughs> the romance who tortured her being represented by the heartless nuns and her own mother. The nun is also the configuration of Mrs. MacDonald's self-guilt, which hunts her down, to be punished for her wrongdoings, guiding her to the place she was intended to end up in. Mrs. MacDonald eventually reads the last note, which is the representation of her thoughts placed inside a coffin six feet underground. She lays in the coffin and closes its cover, burying herself alive, as this was the fate awaiting her since the beginning she made her way to the boarding school. She was to suffer the crimes and sins she committed by an imaginary murderous saint being embodied by her daughter's rightfully vengeful soul and her own self-guilt leading to her death. There are several more endings in the game, which I will make a subsequent video for, as they entail much more information about the lore. If you enjoyed this video, stay tuned for more by hitting the subscribe button and the notification bell. You can follow me on Twitter and suggest more awesome games such as this one. It's been your host, Star. Till the next time, have a fantastic day.